Hello and welcome back to Honey Hill. My name is Samantha. I'm so glad you could join me this evening for a June garden tour. I am back home from England. I don't know exactly right now what order you're gonna be seeing all the videos in between the videos from England and the videos now that I'm back home in my garden in Washington State. But we thought this was a great moment to show you because the roses are blooming. I did miss most of my irises blooming. There's still a few hanging on, so I wanted to show you as many things as I can before the garden kind of shifts over and before deer start coming in. Um, we all have my husband to thank for uh, spraying regularly with liquid fence while I was gone to keep the deer at bay and so that I could come home to beautiful roses in bloom. But I'm starting in the kitchen garden. So the last time you were in here with me, I was building these arches here out of willow branches. And I wanted to mention that uh, a big concern that came up in the comments was uh, sticking willow, fresh willow cuttings into soil and worrying about them taking root. Now, um, all of the greenery, if you look back on that video that was on these branches, ha completely died back and I don't see any signs of these rooting so far, but I am going to be taking them out uh, at the end of the season. So these aren't gonna stay in the soil very long. However, um, you don't have to use willow to make arches. If you live in an area and you've tried to stick willow in the ground and it roots for you readily, which it's very notorious for doing, um, please use another type of branch. Now, um, you can soften most branches by putting them in a big um, uh, container of water for 24 to 48 hours to make them more pliable if you don't get them really, really green in the early spring where they're more flexible. But anyway, I wanted to kind of show you, I've got the sweet pea starting to grow up. I haven't tied them in. I'm gonna be putting some twine in there to get these clinged on. Um, I have a chocolate flake sweet pea uh, uh, starting to bloom, which is very exciting. And I have the beautiful Betty Corning clematis in glorious bloom. I just tied her up a little bit today because uh, she was needing a little bit of help but, um, since I had left, but she actually she's just doing magnificent this year. And I had to cut her back really far and lost several of her stems from the spring um, when I was uh, building this structure, but looking absolutely beautiful. Behind me, I have in bloom, this is a two year old Ash Wednesday climbing rose. This is a very rare uh, German rose. I purchased it from Rogue Valley Roses in Oregon State, and it is typically a once bloomer. However, at Rogue Valley Roses, they do say that once she gets established, she is known to repeat bloom. So I'm really looking forward to that. I planted, I have two of them here in the kitchen garden, two out front growing over an arbor over my front path. And the reason why I wanted to initially plant her in a protected spot was from the deer so that I can keep her um, alive in this more protected space where the deer aren't gonna be munching on most of her. My kids and I uh, today spent a good portion of our Saturday cleaning up and ripping almost everything out that wasn't a permanent fixture in this kitchen garden. It just had become incredibly overgrown and overwhelming for me. Um, I had an oregano plant which has seeded and taken over all of the walkways was growing everywhere. We took the plant out. We weeded as much of it out as we can. I'm gonna keep weeding it. We're gonna be um, ordering in fresh gravel this, this year. So this is all gonna get a big cleanup. I have to top all the, the uh, raised beds with fresh compost and fix up the little drip system. So I still have things I'm doing. This is still in process, but I feel like I can breathe more in the space. I wasn't even wanting to come in here because it just was so overwhelming. Um, and it just needed, it needed a refresh. After being in England um, and seeing some of the kitchen gardens there, they were all very organized, but also wild at the same time. Um, and I just felt like mine was leaning a little bit too wild. But I wanted to show you 
So I have my Espalier apple tree here that is planted in a bottomless uh, wine barrel or whiskey barrel. So I have actually cut out most of the bottom of this and that this method is from Bunny Guinness and or yeah Bunny Guinness I believe is her name and she is in the UK and she's a really big fan of uh, planting trees in bottomless pots because their roots will eventually go down into the soil so they can stay in the pots um, indefinitely. And then while I was gone, actually, I had uh, three very late David Austin bare root roses come in. And I mean, end of May, end of May is, in, is very, very late in our area to have bare roots coming in. We typically like to plant them in April. But I had ordered in the wintertime Elizabeth, the newer, um, new for us in the U.S. this year, uh, rose from David Austin. So I have three of them here. My husband very kindly planted them for me because I was in England when they came in and they are already putting on growth and actually looking really amazing for only being um, in the ground for like, what, two or three, two or three weeks? Yeah. I think two weeks. Um, and then over on this other structure, this, this is a Montana Rubens Clematis, which has gotten a little bit mangled. I need to chop it back as I was uh, weeding and ripping uh, all the tulips and everything out of this bed. So I need to give this a little zhuzh and fix, fix it up. But also another clematis that I cut back very severely uh, earlier in the spring, but it is doing great. Um, I cut back the boysenberry very aggressively. I know this is eventually going to absolutely take over this space and I'm just going to keep cutting it back and cutting it back and then maybe someday needing to remove it entirely. Within the next two or three years, the plan is to build a very large in-ground fenced in vegetable garden. So big things like this will get moved and this space will stay uh, dedicated to herbs and um, ornamental uh, plantings that I wanna have close to the house that I'll just kind of in enjoy. Um, and then the back bed here has my four blueberries. And then I do have some um, Sahara Rubeckia that is self-sown and I just kept let that stay there. I ripped out all the sweet rocket that had been blooming in here, um, which felt a little bit ruthless because I love them so much. I did move as many as I could earlier in the spring out to the rose meadow, but it just felt like I wanted, I wanted this space to be cleaned up. I want to have fresh gravel down. I just need some breathing space in the garden um, and regain a little bit of control. Now, I also cut back, I have also overkill three uh, blackberries. These are, there are three different varieties, I believe. I know one is Black Prince. I'll have to see if I can find the other two. Um, they're thornless blackberries and I cut them um, way, way back and it had they had some dead canes from the winter time. So got these cleaned up. These are looking refreshed and we already have lots of blossoms starting, which is great. Um, we had a huge crop of blackberries last year and um, I didn't even get to utilize them all. So I'm really hoping we get another big flush this year and I can better plan to use them this year. And in the back corner is my Eden climbing rose along with this red raspberry that is now um, really growing up out of this pot with a sensation uh, honeysuckle tucked in back there as well. It's kind of a a mix and I think there's some lemon balm in that pot that I can't seem to um, get get out of there but the Eden Rose um, has been back here I think for three years and this is the first winter that it died back hard and I have cut um, I've cut it down to about one-third of its original size, maybe a quarter of its size. Last year, it is sprouting lots of new growth. I do have some blossom in place. Um, we're seeing a lot of, um, I came home, before I left, there wasn't a lot of bug activity, insect activity or uh, any kind of munching on my rose leaves. But when I came home, just in that two week period that I was in England, I'm seeing a lot of activity. Um, something I'm gonna be talking to you a lot about um, in the next upcoming videos is I um, have ordered from Arbico Organics 
beneficial nematodes that I'm gonna be spraying and releasing into the soil of my garden. Um, I ordered about five million of those little guys, enough to cover one acre. I spoke to their customer service on the phone for about half an hour and went over all the logistics of what I need to do. Um, ideally, you do this when the soil is 42 degrees Fahrenheit in the spring and the ambient temperature in the air is five to seven degrees warmer than that. Um, so you can get a, a before, and that's, you know, before everything is really flushed in the garden and the insects have even really emerged so that you get on top of it because I want to work towards becoming an absolutely no spray garden, even organic sprays. I did have to use a knockdown organic spray because um, the thrips and I have flea beetle, which um, really, really badly, which I have never had um, to this level before. So I'm going to, I did the knockdown spray. I'm going to move on to the beneficial nematodes and the other bug that we're going to be utilizing is assassin bugs at some point um, probably next year though um, working with the schedule that i talked with arbico organics about they're based in arizona i will link their website down below great customer service so if you have questions about all of that they were um, the gal that i spoke to was absolutely wonderful and very very helpful answering all my questions so i'm learning and i'm going to bring you along as i learn and hopefully encourage some of you out there that we can have beautiful roses and beautiful gardens that are uh, free of, of the uh, very pesty insects without having to depend so heavily on sprays or spraying at all. That would be my ideal garden. Um, but like I said, I did have to use a knockdown spray of an organic from um, uh, Bonide this year. So I am going to move on now to the lower terrace garden and show you what's blooming down there. So I'm kind of in the midst of a little wooly mangy mess. Um, I'm waiting for the sweet rocket which was beautiful in bloom. I did film a clip of it I think before I left that I'll insert here if I can find that um, when it was just absolutely glorious. You'll, if you remember I started these from seed and these are ones that I'm very happy to have spread to spread wherever they want to go in this border in this new border on the slope we've created. Um, I do have some huh, weeding to do over here. Um, but I have a Gertrude Jekyll rose, which suffered a lot. That was a brand new planted bare root. It's in a little bit more shade than I'd like, um, but it is putting on a lot of growth. I have the Generous Gardener roses from David Austin planted on either side. It's budded up quite a lot. Um, mixed with the East River clematis, which is climbing up both sides as well, and very, very close to getting some blooms on these. Um, I need to go around and fertilize. Uh, that's something that I've been really behind on this year is fertilizing all of my roses. I need to fertilize my delphiniums, and um, I have a much quicker way of fertilizing that I'm enjoying a lot more um, now and I will I will do that with you guys in a video as well um, but coming down the steps I have the Irish moss I have cosmos which have self seeded around that I had planted that I started from seed last year very happy that I didn't have to start any from seed this year because they have spread nicely throughout this little area and um, a deer has come and bitten this one down, but that's just um, pinching it back for me a little bit. I have the Wild Eve roses down here, and then this massive waterfall of Clematis Paul Farge, um, which desperately needs to be trained up this fir tree. Um, <laughs> It is going to be a little bit of a tricky job to do without breaking too much of him. Um, but I need to put some of those little eye screws into the tree to help this clematis cling on and get going up instead of down and out, which it is doing right now. And this is absolutely looking beautiful at the moment. This is a Campanula. And I saw it at a nursery here locally last 
summer and there was only one of them and it is absolutely gorgeous i don't remember exactly the name of the variety but if i can find it i will uh, put it in the description box below i'd love to find more of these this year i did see these i think in king charles's garden at highgrove um, in england so i was very pleased about that and then over into the blue, white, and yellow border. It is filling in so nicely. The alcamilla in the front is blooming its chartreuse blossom, which is um, at its peak. It's starting to go over um, and, and age out a little bit, and I will be cutting all of those blossoms off um, soon. I have the Orion uh, geranium, the hardy geranium coming into bloom. I have more of those xanthos, no it's not xanthos, is it xanthos? The yellow, pale yellow variety of cosmos that I started from seed last year that have also self-seeded all around in this area where I had planted them. So all, again, very happy to have those uh, volunteer annuals like cosmos um, in the garden because um, they're always, always welcome. Um, I wanted to highlight, so all this, the spring things um, have, I think, uh, have kind of coming on like the Solomon seal is out of bloom. The white bleeding hearts are out of bloom. I have my uh, incredible hydrangeas and my bobo hydrangeas that will be blooming it later in the summer. I have my delphiniums starting to come up, um, but I have a desdemona rose from David Austin starting to come into bloom. And then this beautiful iron structure, I commissioned a, des a design that I sent to a local welder and he very kindly made this and another uh, design I will show you in a moment. This is um, very common in England. It's called a lobster cage, but they're very hard to find in the US. In fact, I wasn't able to find um, a source in the US where I could uh, purchase these. So I wanted to uh, design one and have it built um, for me. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. This is the prototype of of um, that lobster cage that I wanted to have built. I'm very, very, very good quality. Um, now the rose inside, I, uh, if I didn't mention, is Jane Austen uh, from David Austen. It's a more rare uh, variety of a yellow uh, rose. And that one, I don't even know if I've seen it bloom yet because I think when I planted it was very small. It's an own root rose. Um, and I think the deer kept nibbling on it. So hopefully I get to see her bloom this year. I have speckled through these little tiny uh, blue alliums that are just kind of peeking up through here, giving me these little, little starbursts of blue throughout the border. And if you remember, we planted this together last year. This is the Geranium Fam album, which is the white, variety of the fam hardy geranium. Now, you know, if you watch my videos, fam geraniums are my favorite uh, types of hardy geranium. And this one, I wasn't sure, it came in a tiny little uh, uh, pot and was quite small when I got it. I'm so excited to see it blooming. There's another one in here um, somewhere. Oh, right behind me. That is also in bloom. So they, they both survived. I can't remember if there was a third one. I feel like I would have ordered three. It might be tucked in here um, somewhere. And then I have these beautiful, um, the last of the Silverado irises, the bearded irises. These are, came from Shriners in Oregon um, in bloom. They were, uh, we, Tristan and I were FaceTiming while I was in England and they were absolutely glorious when they were all in full, full bloom. The pale variety, the pale yellow variety in the back, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but if I can, uh, it's also from Shriners and it's going to, it's going to come to me later. Um, and then I have the Souvenir de Andre Nepeda, which is starting to bloom in this border. There's more of them throughout here. And I have um, the 
is it spring snow crab apple that had that bloomed gloriously this spring it is now setting its crab apples and will be just a nice autumn structure throughout the season throughout um, the whole summer um, the snowball bush in the back has bloomed i've got another incredible hydrangea um, and the vanilla strawberry hydrangea standard um, in the back the other two crab apples have come and bloomed they are now also setting little crab apples thankfully they're surviving within their little cages which aren't very attractive but they are helpful um, still lots of work to do on the lily pond although we have had some lilies um, blooming uh, but um, don't look too closely at this because there's this is this has not been touched yet um, the beautiful English birdhouse that I bought from Garden Air um, this year, it is already completely full uh, of birds uh, may, who have made their nests, they made their homes there. And I cannot tell you, um, just the act of putting out birdhouses, I picked up another birdhouse I'm gonna show you um, in another video that I purchased in England uh, from Dalesford. Just bringing in birdhouses, uh, putting out bird feeders, all of those things, having water and uh, uh, access to the birds has brought so many more birds into my garden. And I love to see them. They fill me with joy. I want my garden to be a haven for wildlife. And it is turning into that. Um, in, an, in a soon upcoming video, I'm gonna be making over this old garden bench I have. I've ordered a custom bench cushion for it. I have new outdoor pillows for it. I'm gonna be uh, tightening this up and sanding it and staining it. Um, so this will be all zhuzhed up. And then I have a, another David Austin Rose. I think this is Golden Celebration. Also some bug damage on the leaves here. Um, I believe this is Golden Celebration blooming. I had my pastel, pastelligans, uh, three um, peonies from Edelman peonies, I believe in Oregon. They, uh, first year uh, I got blooms out of them, but I was in England when they bloomed. So I only got to see them over FaceTime and that just gutted me. Um, but I had to make those sacrifices of some of that peak uh, late May, early June garden time um, to be able to see the peak in England. This is another Betty Corning Clematis that I planted when we put this stake in and I'm gonna be putting some um, screws here so that it can climb up the post. This is looking a little bit wind, uh, windy and dry and I have now seen a fresh crop of bindweed um, that I need to eradicate from this border. But these white delphiniums are starting to come into bloom. There's another one to my right and generally I'm just so happy how this border is turning out. I did want to share an edit I'm going to be making. If you remember I planted this very stunning um, well, and particularly stunning before the deer got to it, um, Brandywine crab apple tree here at the corner of the blue, white, and yellow border. Um, and it is a, a beautiful lipstick, rosy pink. I don't like saying lipstick pink, but rosy pink um, blossom. And it just sort of, I was sitting with it and looking at it and I, it did, it punctuated the border in the wrong kind of way because it didn't fit. So we're before this gets established, we have a perfect spot for it much closer to the house, which means that I will be be able to see the blossoms much better from the house in the spring, which makes so much more sense because the blossoms on this are insanely gorgeous. I will um, insert some footage if you didn't see it. Um, or some pictures rather of these blossoms that I took when I purchased it because um, it is just such a beautiful crab apple tree. But I'm going to be putting this closer to the house where we already have um, four or five crab apple trees and it's going to be kind of punctuating the walk around our south side of our um, upper terrace and I'm going to be naming that the crab apple way. So in 10 years from now, when all of these crab apples are mature and blooming in the springtime and you just walk around the side of the house to the back garden, I just imagine how beautiful that's gonna be. But I've already purchased the tree. We're gonna be replacing this because I wanted a focal point here that I can sit and look out on that can kind of 
um, move my eye to where I want it to go. And I'm putting here, and I saw them all over England, um, the golden chain tree or the laburnum. And I think that, that their blossoms are so impactful. They look like a wisteria, but the golden yellow uh, blooms or ricemes. And they're so impactful that I can definitely see that through the house and the color of it because we get all the sunlight that glows through here. We get all the morning light because this is east facing, east and south facing, but we get the, the sun rising in the morning and just that glowing through the golden chain tree as it matures, it's going to be stunning. I think along with the plans that we have for a third terrace down here in the future and potentially even a fourth terrace with a very large pad to put a glass greenhouse someday and gardens around it so that we can walk down and see from the house. Um, I think that a laburnum or a golden chain tree where would frame and droop over the steps down to the future levels would be just stunning. The plans for all of this overgrowth is to weed whack it down um, and I'm going to be laying some black plastic down to, to try to kill off all of the, the weeds that have really cropped up from the fill that we brought in. Um, I am very much okay with the natural landscape around us. Um, but however, wherever we have turned soil or fill, we get this huge crop of the, of the wild mustard and um, the, this, this weed, which is escaping, uh, the name is just escaping me, the mullein um, comes up. So all, and, and uh, bindweed, all of those things come up. Um, and but the yellow mustard in particular then it turns into tumbleweeds in the fall and the late summer and fall and it's just awful um, so I want to try to um, suppress that hold that back and incorporate in areas um, more of my own wildflower meadow plantings um, coming back to the stairs the souvenir de andre nepeda has absolutely exploded and kind of taken over everything including the wild eve roses which you can't even see at the moment that are behind them so i think um these this variety is just too big for this this application or i might um in the fall or spring move it to the back and have the roses in front so we're going to be playing around with this or moving this somewhere else entirely but i do have these beautiful white and i think the i bought these at the spokane garden expo last year these astrantia and this astrantia they grew on me slowly um but after after since last year when i purchased these and a few other varieties, I started to love them and their beautiful star-like blooms. And um, I saw them in some beautiful gardens in England. And now I just want so much, so many more of them. But under, under planted, we have these gorgeous uh, uh, blue waterfall campanulas that I just planted this spring. And hopefully they will bulk up and someday cascade over the rocks. I've dotted them all the way down this uh, rock wall and then we do have um, the red campion that is just going over red campion was all over england and um, very much included in the beautiful wildflower lawns and meadows that um, that they uh, were creating over there at the chelsea flower show i saw um, so much of this mixed with the oxeye daisies and the tall buttercups and Anyway, it just was uh, I'm very happy that I have it in my garden. I definitely want more of it. It can spread aggressively. Um, I have the pink head coat lavender uh, starting to come into bloom. And I believe this is the cat's meow nepeta, which I have going all the way down, which is in full, full bloom and will need to be cut back soon. This is a proven winner's pink salvia, which has already bloomed and going over. Um, I have the um, evening primrose here planted throughout this little area. And then I have my favorite geranium fam, raven, tinkling in the background. 
There was Silverado Bearded Iris blooming in the back, which has sadly gone over that we missed. Um, all of this glorious, fluffy, creeping thyme is starting to do all the things I hope it to do in spreading and softening these rocky sur uh, surfaces. More of the uh, evening primrose. And then I have this summer romance rose. It's a Cordes rose blooming beautifully in the back with some uh, self-sewn white fox gloves and more of the cat's meow nepeta. Again, here is some more planting of the, the famous now geranium fam raven, the bumblebees, the pollinators love it. Um, and in the back, actually blooming through it is a bush clematis. And I can't seem to see if I still have the tag. Oh, I do. This one is called, ooh. <sighs> this one is called a uh, rain dance bush clematis. And it is growing a little bit through that little wigwam and um, through this geranium. More of the Alcamilla mollis. And I do have some of the beautiful whirling butterflies uh, that is coming up the gara that is blooming, uh, will be blooming soon. And some grass that needs to be pulled out. I do have cosmos coming up in here. The white creeping thyme, Alcamilla mollis the Souvenir de Andre Nepeta, and another gorgeous bush clematis. Now this is a different variety and I don't know if I have the tag. I will see if I can find the name of it, um, but such a favorite. I love this clematis. And then I have three tea clipper roses in the back here with a, um, with some bearded iris from Shriners that desperately needs to be deadheaded. Um, but focusing on tea clipper, I mean, this is one of my top three favorite roses. The structure of it is very loose and open and the stems are very, very long, which actually makes it great for cutting. Um, but the progression and the stage of the bloom and how it uh, opens and comes into full color and then it fades right now. Many of the blossoms have faded to this very soft, soft, soft peach um, and the very kind of ruffly petals. It's such a favorite of mine. I absolutely love this rose. Um, I, I don't see David Austin selling it in the US. Um, I don't see it commonly sold in the UK either, but um, Heirloom Roses had it for a time and, and I don't know if they're stocking it anymore. Um, if anyone from Heirloom Roses ever watches this, please restock a tea clipper so that we can all bring more of her to our gardens. And then I have um, some Ajuga and other um, more Campanulas and uh, Nepeta and lots of ground cover in here uh, sprinkled throughout just tea clipper looking gorgeous and glorious. I have daisies about to come and bloom. More irises that um, are have already bloomed and I did cut those ones back. Um, and then we've got some more campanula, white uh, woolly thyme, and another cat's meow nepeta. Now this whole border hasn't really been been touched much since I've been home, so it's definitely needing my attention. But I'll point your attention right now to this steep, steep slope, um, which uh, what we have plans this, hopefully this coming week, work is going to begin to create a, a wide pathway that connects this lower lawn to the upper lawn. Um, that, so this will all be, um, have sprinkler added to it and have sod put onto it probably in the autumn. And what I'm doing here is that uh, the rest of this curve around the property, around this upper terrace, we are going to be excavating. We are going to be smoothing out and kind of just scraping off the top surface of the soil and, and having um, the gentleman working for us uh, lay a bunch of uh, piles of compost that we can spread thickly for me to plant up the slope in uh, the summer and in, in the autumn 
However, this slope is quite, uh, quite a lot steeper and it's not really possible for us to scrape anything away because of two reasons. Because it's so steep that if we do, it's going to uh, cause us some issues with erosion. And secondly, because our septic drain field uh, arms run through here and we don't want to compromise any of those and cause issues for us that would be very costly and unfortunate so we're going to just um, utilize a no dig method here where we i've been covering this with a very thick uh probably probably polypropylene uh, plastic that I picked up from Home Depot. I will link it down below the type that I bought. And I'm gonna be utilizing this um, again on this other part of the slope. So I'll be reusing this plastic and keeping it and using it in the future when I need to do similar projects like this. Um, but this has been on here basically um, with all the heat and the sun, we had 90 degree days in May and rain and helping all of that um, organic material underneath break down. We weed whacked it as short as possible beforehand. And then when we take this plastic off, we're gonna be adding a ton of compost on top and planting straight into it. That is the plan for now. Hopefully we'll be successful. We will be sharing that journey. We've got some bindweed wanting to peek out from the plastic. It is, it is, so aggressive and such a okay. okay so up in the upper terrace back border i have more alcamilla mollus self-sewn foxgloves the sweet woodruff um the sanguisorba chocolate chip sanguisorba is still almost about to come into bloom i have some cheeky little coco loco roses that are popping out there's more here in the back popping out more self-sewn foxgloves i believe this is walker's low nepeta in the front more sanguisorba uh, again the betty corning clematis or clematis repeated on this trellis here on the house under uh planted by a beautiful hydrangea that uh, had started at the Rosarium Garden Center here in Spokane, Washington, and hopefully we'll get to see some beautiful blooms from it uh, this year. I have a Sally Holmes rose that is planted here. However, it suffered insanely bad winter dieback this year. I had to cut it back very severely. So we are gonna see um, how she blooms. Now, I've had Good luck so far. Many of the roses I thought I lost, I didn't actually lose. So I um, am, have been fertilizing them as I have realized they are who they are supposed to be. And I'm gonna be giving everybody another round of fertilizer very, very soon. I have a Pocahontas penstemon tucked in here. More of the souvenir de Andre Nepeda, which is just everywhere. There is a, a Nicole Carol Miller rose in the back, which is supposed to be quite a large rose however it's not grown bigger than about 24 inches since i planted it and so i'm probably going to move her this coming spring i have the bush clematis from proven winners um i always forget the name of this one it is flopping a little bit because i don't have a structure for it right now but there is more sanguisorba behind, more souvenir de Andre Nepeda, and the beautiful, beautiful bearded iris, which now looks very sad and needs to be deadheaded, that came from my mom's garden. I've had some of you ask me if I know the variety of this, and no, I'm so sadly do not know. Um, she was given, you know, back in the 90s um, and the early 2000s, uh, irises from other gardeners and friends and neighbors and you know swapping things and these laid um, not flowering in her woods <laughs> in an old flower bed that had been overgrown by the woods around her for and for many many years until I rescued them and then discovered what they were um, and they've been blooming happily ever since and spreading like crazy I might add I need to dig and divide this one at the end um, after these are done, completely done and cut back. Um, I have 
yet to address any of the weeds or anything in, in deadheading in this border since I've been home from England. So a lot has happened in the last uh, three or four weeks since this has been touched. So there's lots of work for me to do in here, lots of grass that's overgrown um, that I'm gonna try not to focus on too much. There was a beautiful coral charm peony here that bloomed while I was away. Sadly, I missed it. Um, a gorgeous vanilla strawberry hydrangea, which will be blooming later in the summer. Some more of the Walker's Low Cat Mint. This is just, I think there was originally one plant back here when I first built the house, and then I've just divided it and divided it and divided it um, because it just wants to spread everywhere. There were three distant drums roses here that suffered horrible dieback. This is a very harsh, windy, uh, cold corner of the garden that's very, very exposed. And hopefully we, we help with some of that exposure in the future as our hedgerow, which actually wasn't included in any video. We just, it was a project that we really just pushed ourselves to the limits to get done before I went to England. Um, cause he, because I had a lot of bare root roses and things I needed and, and shrubs I had bought in the spring that I needed to get planted before I left. Um, and we thankfully got it done, but I didn't get to share it with you guys. But behind me, we'll talk about it, is a beginnings of a new hedgerow. Now, this huge drift of bearded irises is sadly out of bloom. I did, the day before I left, film some footage of the irises that were blooming at that time. And I will insert it here now so that you can see at least some of the irises, but they will just be even bigger and better next year. Now, I always seem to be very lucky in having at least a small patch of the amazing gray Shirley poppies and the Pandora poppies. This one is going to be a gorgeous, um, uh, amazing gray poppy opening soon that volunteer in this area every year. And I just love them. I look forward to seeing them. And I'm going to be purposefully spreading their seed this autumn all over the rose meadow because that area needs as many poppies as it can get but there's tons more in here that are going to come up i see some verbena bonariensis that's going to come up in here um, i see some lots of of goodies that are going to be self sitting in here lots of larkspur in the back here is the julia child rose and um, i have the primrose lilac that has come and gone in bloom, a um, Burke woodyi viburnum that has come and gone in bloom. We do have all of the beautiful Dara, the Queen Anne's Lace, the variety Dara, the purple one um, that also volunteers and has spread throughout this area. The yarrow that I started from seed, from the floret seed now years ago, which goes bonkers every year and I need to um, dig up even more of it. And I'm gonna be trying to get it mostly out of these areas now and, and moving them all to the rose meadow, all of uh, uh, trying to cut down on the amount of, of the yarrow in this particular border and leaving this a little bit um, tighter and having the rose meadow be really full and loose. Now, um, again, Lots of work to be done in here, but I do have, bless her heart, Gertrude Jekyll in bloom. The, one of the most beautiful, fragrant roses. This poor thing needs to be properly supported. Um, another project I have not, not been able to get to. She also, um, she had about 12 foot canes and she suffered a very significant dieback this winter as well, but she's blooming. She still needs more cleaning up and more tender loving care, um, but just love her. I wanna add more of her um, in her shrub form to the garden um, in the future. There was two beautiful specimens of her, no bugs, no anything, and they're no spray. I don't know how they do it in King Charles's uh, kitchen vegetable garden and that were it was they were both framing a pond in, in the center a lily pond in the center of of that kitchen garden and just a sunny rose i wish we could have taken photos of those specimens 
And in the back, one of my absolute favorite perennials. It's finally putting on size. I got this as tiny little plants in the mail. Um, the Campanula Pritchard's variety will, once this perennial is established, I'd say next year it will be its third year and I expect it to really leap in its third year. You know, the first year, the, the old saying is the first year they sleep, second year they creep, third year they leap. I'm expecting it to reach its full six feet in height next year, but this is about to come into bloom in their beautiful bell flowers. I have yet to meet a Campanula I do not love. Now, this area has become absolutely overwhelmed with the yarrow and self-sown larkspur. There are very small, unfortunately, honey Dijon roses that are super buggy right now um, that suffered a lot of winter dieback again. Um, and there's lots of grass that somehow popped up in here, even though um, that has since popped up since our spring, big spring, this big spring weeding that I did. So this, this is my um, next few days. We'll be addressing this whole border, cutting everything back and doing lots and lots of weeding. In the back of this border is a mock orange, which has a few for the very first time, a few little blossoms. I had no idea when I planted it, it was gonna take so many years to bloom. And I hope that now that I am seeing some blooms in the back, that next year and the year after, it will be fully in bloom. Mock orange is one of my favorite scents in the garden. Uh, so looking forward to someday having a well-established mock orange. Mock orange and dutzia are two flowering, spring flowering shrubs that are very, very fragrant that I saw a lot in England, repeated over and over and over. And it just, I don't have any dutzia in my garden. I definitely want to add it and I want to add more mock orange. Coming around in the back, there is a Crown Princess Margarita climbing rose. It always has stayed about that size. It did suffer some dieback. Um, and in front of it is a firelight hydrangea that will bloom later in the summer. I had some of the um, Princess Charlene de Monaco roses here. One of them did die completely um, and the other one is still going and going to bloom soon. Now in the front of this border in, uh, next to this Kwanzaa cherry tree, which by the way, barely bloomed this spring and it had bloomed beautifully two years ago, a little bit less last year and it barely bloomed this year. And I'm wondering if, um, I know it gets water, um, maybe it wants extra water, maybe it wants extra fertilizer. Um, I'm not exactly sure why because the tree is very healthy. So um, if you have any ideas on why my this one Kwanzaa cherry tree didn't give me a lot of beautiful blooms this spring. It could have also been from maybe a late frost that we had that took some of those buds and that, that may be it. Um, because we did have that very, very late snow and frost and then a couple weeks later it felt like summer. So um, more yarrow and the self-seeded Dara everywhere. I have hollyhocks galore in the front here uh, this year. They are just like a little stream flowing through the whole front borders of the garden. There, I can tell by the leaves, some of them are the, the white uh, hollyhocks that came from Tasha Tudor's garden that I started from seed years ago now. And then some of them, um, may be the varieties that came from my mom's garden and it, or it may be some new hybrid that has uh, mixed together. Uh, foxgloves that have self-sown in here. I have Roseanne geranium that is blooming down this border. And then I have the beautiful Queen of Sweden rose blooming in the back. She's not as gorgeous as she was in my last June garden tour, but I did, um, you know, to be fair, I barely pruned her last spring and this spring I pruned her quite hard and I'm kind of wondering if if um, for whatever reason she blooms better um, with a lighter prune, but you know, I don't know. Um, it could also have just been be the weather, um, but I'm going to be giving her another feed here shortly. 
So far, all of the roses in the front, including uh, Jude the Obscure, La the Lady Gardener, um, Litchfield Angel, that are all in this area, have not bloomed yet. Um, but I'm, I'm, I can kind of tell by the, I was worried that these completely died because they all basically had to be cut um, within 12 inches of the ground. And, but I can tell by the growth structure so far that I'm hopeful that they are still true to variety. Um, I'm, I don't remember every rose that I've planted, which ones were on root and which ones were, were grafted. Um, so I, it's a wait and see kind of game. Um, in the back, there are, um, in this border, two vanilla strawberry hydrangeas. In between are the coral charm peonies throughout and then the Princess Alexandra of Kent, David Austin rose, which got a really bad case of thrips and some of the buds have been damaged, but they um, are starting to bloom now. And um, we also have gotten a lot of rain, which has affected the, the uh, guard petals as well. But um, they seem to be okay as they are opening, popping open. Now, more self-sewn foxgloves. I'm so actually impressed. This was actually another coral charm painting that these three roses here, one, two, three, I believe this, this um, Hardy Geranium, by the way, is Anne Fulcard. Um, love this one. Saw this a lot in England. Um, but these three here are Ambridge Rose from David Austin. Another one I don't see them selling right now. I thought these were goners. I did not think these were going to come back. And look at them. They're blooming. They're full of buds. Um, true to variety. Such a sweet ballet pink rose. Behind our... Um, Blue Paradise Phlox that is, that is planted in a river that will be blooming soon. And then the Geranium Fayum Raven, again, repeated in the garden. Um, another, just a solid favorite. There is also an Evelyn Rose here, which has not bloomed yet. And I'm going to see if she is also true to her variety. And back here as well, more Geranium Fayum Raven more Alcamilla mollis, the Dara coming through. But right in this section here is more of that uh, Pritchard's variety Campanula that again, um, this is the first year I'm seeing it at the height that it is now, maybe four feet or so. And then next year I hope to see it at six feet along with the white Delphiniums to reach about around the same height in the future. Please don't mind my dead spring containers um, that died while I was in England. I am going to be planting them soon with my summer displays. My teasing Georgia rose, I, I cut it back very, very, very hard. Harder than I ever have um, because of all the winter dieback that it had. It actually needs more cleaning up, I can see, where it just never sprouted new growth. Um, and it's not looking the best it's ever looked but it is, it is starting to bloom. So I'm gonna keep, it's a, keep watching and seeing how um, it continues to perform. Um, just giving it some more, some more TLC, but I cut it back really hard as well because we're gonna be building a new structure over this um, entryway, replacing the front door and the steps and the walkway. Um, so I want to be able to train it to grow up and over the new structure over the front door. Now, um, on this side of the path, self-sown yarrow, <laughs> very, very thuggish in the garden. These beautiful oriental poppies. Um, I think this one is uh, the wedding. Um, I know that they have uh, Princess Louise. Uh, I'll have to think of the name. Um, in the garden as well. But this was just a little, probably that came from either uh, a, a hardware shop um, when we first built the house or something, but it's bulked up really nice in size. And um, the, you know, the blooms only last a day, but it does, it has plenty more blossoms coming. It blooms profusely. So the blossoms are very short lived, but very, very big and beautiful. Delphiniums, my little border and block of delphiniums are starting to grow. I need to push these with a, uh, with a lot of feed uh, this week uh, so that they have uh, put on some bulk and height and they bloom well in July. I typically have in late June and in and beginning of July a really strong bloom of the delphiniums. 
The uh, Limelight Hydrangea has just gotten huge in the background as well as my Royal Raindrops multi-stem crab apple in the back of the border. It has grown so much this year. Just it, seemingly in the last couple of months, it's just boomed and um, it's just well and truly taking, taking its place and taking over. In the front here, I have Little Lime Hydrangeas, Geranium, Roseanne, some beautiful dark red or burgundy estranches, alcamilla mollis. So in this border, lots more little self-sewn foxgloves everywhere. Um, the beautiful, I had this gorgeous uh, corally pink, I think it's Beverly Sills is the variety of iris that was in just full bloom while I was gone and my husband uh, FaceTimed me and it just was stunning. I'm so sad that I missed it. That was filling that back corner, filling in here. There's a few little sad remnants of it left, but I do have a crocus David Austin Rose coming into bloom. In the back, that beautiful purple uh, bush clematis uh, that I just love so much every year. It's now growing up and into the Royal Raindrops crab, uh, crab apple tree, and I think that that is just stunning. I love that, that, uh, mixture between that's the uh, pinky winky hydrangea the crab apple and the bush clematis and then in the front i've got you know the self-sewn foxglove self-sewn hollyhocks and the delphiniums and everything is just this this uh happy mess <laughs> and then more of that bush clematis spilling over and i have a honey dijon rose that was planted bare root last year so it's still quite small but it will bulk up and fill this area it did die back a lot over the winter this is one of my favorite delphiniums that will be blooming this this year it's a beautiful that beautiful pink variety these hollyhocks all self-sewn i thought they were I thought I had rid this border of hollyhocks. These ones came from my mother's garden, but they are here and they look pretty healthy. In the last couple of years, I had a hollyhock weevil on my hollyhocks, which are pretty devastating to the hollyhocks, um, but I'm not seeing them at the moment. Um, I am seeing some, some nibbles though. Now, um, I cut back really hard the Leaning Tower of Limelight Hydrangea Standard. Um, someday, someday we'll get it staked properly. Underneath, uh, the Camassias need to be cut back. Lots of um, Echinacea coming up uh, that have also self-sown. Self Lots of weeding needing to be done. Again, we're going to be redoing this walkway. Um, little Lime Hydrangeas on this side, Yarrow. And then uh, more geranium fam. This variety is called uh, Springtime, I believe. And we have beautiful pink flowering Nepeta. More of the favorite chocolate uh, chip sangui sorba. We have a gorgeous Coco Loco Rose. Died back almost to the ground. This was grafted, but look at it. It is budding up fat, beautiful buds and coming into bloom. Another one um, next to it and a honey Dijon rose as well coming up and blooming. All of those I thought were lost and they are not. This rose here is silver linings. Also uh, died back quite a lot and um, not my favorite of the roses, but um, letting it stay here for now. We are losing daylight. I don't know if we're going to focus on the shrub border along the driveway, but I want to show you uh, quickly the rose meadow and where we are with the rose meadow. So before we lose all light, Harlow Carr coming into beautiful bloom behind self-sewn bachelor buttons are blooming. There is a uh, there are a couple of the Abraham Darby roses blooming be beyond it. Um, hellebore is down in the front, but Har Harlow Carr, I've said it before, one of my absolute favorite roses for the garden. Not a cut, not a cut flower, um, but the color, the prolific uh, nature of, of this as a bloomer, and the fragrance, all well worth. And the blooms are this very flat saucer like bloom with very open form. This one needs to be deadheaded, but um, if not being nibbled on by the deer, it does bloom prolifically. Now, 
Um, we've got all the roses up through the meadow that are interwoven with the plantings of the Russian sage and asters and grasses and um, all the di different perennials, the rudbeckia and all of the different perennials in here, the nepeda to make this a rose meadow. The peonies have come and bloomed. Um, we have the Souvenir de Andre Nepeta repeated everywhere in my garden. And then a beautiful Mary Rose from David Austin in bloom. Another Abraham Darby there in the background with some of the foxgloves I started. I've noticed that the foxgloves that I started last year, they're all blooming in the garden this year, but they're much shorter than I anticipated. They should be quite a lot, like five feet tall. Um, but I think it's because they're just in full sun. And foxgloves are, they really do like that dappled light and they, they perform their best. Someday, as I plant more trees in this area, there will be dappled light for those um, foxgloves to be planted underneath them. But um, I'm still gonna keep pushing the foxglove in here because they are beautiful and the deer do not eat them. Look at these little starbursts all in the front, these little Schubertii alliums. They're short, but they are just literally like fireworks in the garden and they dry beautifully. So any allium dries beautifully in their seed head form. Now this is another David Austin rose absolutely beautiful. I can't remember exactly which one that is. This is another um, another Betty Corning Clematis that was supposed to kind of grow around and is now spilling over to the ground. Clematis can grow um, in this sort of ground cover like form if you don't if it doesn't have anything to to climb on but more and more and more David Austin roses. I don't know if I can point them all out and before we lose the light. All the irises we planted together um, last summer, most of them did bloom. This one is actually gonna be a, a fresh bloom. What is this variety? Coffee Trader um, blooming and uh, they bloomed while I was gone. They uh, survived the deer uh, this last year. Um, and I think only one of them actually didn't because the deer just ripped it out of the ground so many times over the winter that's what they do they rip them out of my ground and then they drop them down and and if I don't come back outside and find them and replant them they can dry out over the winter time um, but there is this lovely lady of shallot rose I planted last summer and I like to plant these brighter color roses closer to the road and further from the house so that I can actually see them from the house. When they're this vibrant, I can still see the blooms from the house, whereas the white and the softer pinks I want closer to the house so I can see them more easily. And I just wanted to share this front planting of the Cat's Meow Nepeta, the Souvenir de Andre Nepeta. I have a beautiful Princess Victoria, um, I believe is the name of these oriental poppies planted throughout here as well. They have bloomed and gone over. Hopefully they will bloom again later. You can cut these back to the ground after they bloom. And then the white uh, fox gloves, which I started from seed last year, again, expecting them to have been about five feet tall, much shorter, but they were, um, uh, they branched very well. Um, so that is very nice. They did, um, we've gotten a lot of rain, so they're kind of going over. They were um, quite, quite stunning, but they are planted underneath this October Glory maple tree. And then another drift of the same idea of planting in the front of the house, the Cat's Meow Nepeta, the Souvenir de Andre Nepeta, the Alba White Fox Gloves. And then there's a, um, a flowering cherry tree that suffered uh, a lot of um, dead branches over this winter. I'm actually going to be moving this to the border next to the driveway um, this weekend. And then the, the plan is now to have um, a, another October Glory Maple here and have October Glory Maples going down lining the street um, of our, the street side of our property. The large pine tree behind me and that I've spoken about is going to be removed and we are going to mirror on the opposite side of the driveway another October Glory Maple. So in total there should be at least five uh, on the street side of the front of our property to grow up and give us all of that impact and structure and the color in the autumn. 
So more of the foxgloves I started from seed, just kind of going over into bloom. More of David Austin roses sp spotted all throughout this area. I have Silas Marner, Eustacia Vi, Olivia Rose Austin, um, many, many other of the soft pink varieties of David Austin, the Q Gardens Rose, um, which is just now opening up. But look at this beautiful Olivia Rose Austin uh, blooming right here, which I planted from bare root last year. Also at my feet, besides the bindweed, which I am constantly pulling um, in this area that was all native landscape um, just, the, just in the last two years, are all the self-sown cosmos. Again, everywhere throughout here from the Rubenza variety that I planted out here and the apricotta variety I planted out here last year. It's now everywhere and that's wonderful. I will get that summer color from those beautiful cosmos, one of my favorite annuals. Okay, wrapping up the rose meadow, we have added a large swoop to the front. We did the no dig method with the cardboard laid thick layer of compost. We still have rough edges and more compost we need to add to this area, so bear with us. I have the beautiful Shade Master honey locust tree I planted last autumn, and it is putting on some nice growth, I have to say, and looking absolutely beautiful and healthy. I cannot wait to see that structure develop. But at my feet are, is the most beautiful, dainty, soft pink, hardy geranium. Um, I can't remember the name of this variety at the moment. I will see if I can find it and put it in the description box below or on the screen if I do. Um, but there are, were three planted here and I want to find more of it. This is just, it just glows in the garden. More Souvenir de Andre Nepeda, repeated, repeated, repeated. And then um, again, it gets so tall that I want to actually put this now behind the Harlow Car Roses, which, will, which I can prune and, and keep on the smaller side. So these need to be moved back. Um, but I have five, one, two, three, four, five, six Harlow Car Roses back here. Um, these three larger ones are um, at least a year older than the three at the end, which were planted bare root last year. Um, so these have, um, you can kind of see as they, this is a good example of how they develop in size from one year to the next. Um, and they are profuse bloomers, prolific bloomers, beautiful, beautiful garden rows. I want to add more of them to the garden. Beautiful larkspur coming up. I just grabbed some larkspurs uh, seed heads from the opposite side of the garden um, at the end of the summer. Same with the amazing gray poppies last year and I just shook them all over this area on top of fresh compost. And here we have larkspur blooming and we have amazing gray poppies and Pandora poppies that grew up. And it was just the, that was just as easy and simple as that in the, in the late summer when the plants were naturally seeding themselves anyway and letting the autumn and winter rain and snow uh, work its magic. Finally, I wanted to share with you the beginnings of our hedgerow. Now beyond it is the area we're gonna be starting work this week where we're gonna be scraping all of this off, creating a grass pathway. All of that is gonna be happening, but the hedgerow, we desperately needed a privacy and a windbreak on this south exposed side of our garden. So here we have planted four of these Everest crab apple trees, this one being the largest one I could find, only one of them, and that was at Christensen's Nursery in Seattle last year. I have my favorite variety of lilac, which is Beauty of Moscow, uh, two flanking this hedgerow. I have um, three Desdemona roses, or four, three or four Desdemona roses planted throughout a uh, snowball bush planted, lots of campanula in the front. We have to lay um, compost and lots more planting in here down the road. Um, more bridal wreath spirea, another Everest crab apple tree, this thelictrum that needs to be staked, and then um, another one of the Beauty of Moscow lilacs, another bridal wreath spirea, and then five Olivia rose 
Austin, David Austin roses that we just planted a couple weeks ago that also came in extremely late. I think I planted these the day before I went to England um, and wasn't sure if they were gonna make it and they are pushing lots of growth. And then at the end is this um, beautiful, but needs to be properly um, <laughs> staked forest pansy red bud tree with the beautiful purple heart leaves. This was planted as a memorial um, in our garden. And uh, behind we just planted the um, climbing hydrangea to spread down this huge long fence line and it will do so um, if, the, if the deer let it. But climbing hydrangea is such a gorgeous uh, climber. And then I do have a John Davies climbing rose that I needed to pop somewhere. It's another that's a Canadian rose, so it's very, very, very cold hardy. But um, I saw this blooming over a tunnel at the Rosarium Garden Center locally, and um, it just will be smothered in bloom. So I think when, with the two of these together, um, climbing down this train, down this uh, split rail fence, will add privacy to this corner and down um, an interest and um, nectar for the pollinators. That is it for me this evening. I hope you really enjoyed this. You're absolutely out of light. We will see you in the next one. Happy gardening. Bye.